Hey guys, pretty soon a lot of y'all are going to be putting your tomato plants in the ground. Some of you have already started it. And one of the questions that always comes up is uh, when to prune, should you prune your plants, how are you going to prune them, uh, that kind of deal. So I'm going to go over some things that I do, a couple of places where you absolutely should prune. But I'll say this, in the end, uh, it's going to come down to personal preference, your growing style, and how much time you have to actually commit to each plant. The more time you have, the more pruning you can do. If you've got a very busy schedule, you're probably not going to do a whole lot of pruning. And we'll take a look at some stringing. Real quick on the stringing part, all I use is this orange polypropylene bale and twine right here. You can get it in a 20,000 foot roll for about 20 bucks or something at your feed store. It's strong, it's UV treated, it's not going to break. You can put a lot of load on that thing with cucumbers and uh, tomatoes. And I'm just using these trellis clips. You can buy them in bags of 100, 500, 1,000, whatever. And it just comes in here. It's got a notch right on the inside of it that actually locks right here on the string. So you come in here, put it on the string like that. And then when you close it, it's secured to the string. You put it up under your leaf crotch right here so as this thing is growing, it would be supported by it and wouldn't be sliding back down. And for cucumbers, I'll wrap them around the string occasionally, you know, as, as it's growing out the top, but I'll use the, uh, the trellis clips as well. That makes it real easy to keep it going straight up. And you could do this in a greenhouse or build your trellis outside, either one. It works just as well. And for tomatoes, it works the same way. You just lock the thing around the string Pull it in here like so, close it up, and there you got it. Real easy to work with. And then you can just take that apart, take it back off at the end of the year. I've used them about twice, about the third time, right there in the middle, that little section, uh, it'll start to get kind of, kind of weak and go ahead and break. The thing to consider in tomatoes is exactly what growth habit you have. Is it an indeterminate, a determined? Is it gonna to wanna to go vertical, just straight up, or is it gonna to wanna to bush out? What I do uh, with the indeterminates, especially in the greenhouse, I grow them single stem. I just want everything growing up right along this main stem. And everywhere a sucker comes out, I break it off. I mean, I just keep everything clean. The only thing I want is these clusters of tomatoes as it's going up. If you're doing a single stem, the one thing you don't want to do is start pulling the suckers too early. Here's my most recent blossom cluster right here. I don't want to be doing any suckering up above that. And the one just below it right here, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with this growth tip. I don't want this thing to terminate after I have pulled this sucker off. Sometimes these things will go ahead and stop growing and they need to redirect another shoot. And if I've already pulled this one off, uh, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to have to wait a long time for another one to come out. Generally though, being an indeterminate, it's going to keep on coming out right here. Getting away from the indeterminates, these are some determinate ruckers right here. And if you'll notice, there's a fair amount of leaves laying on the ground right there. And that's not good. This is going to be probably the primary reason to do pruning, at least early on, regardless of what kind of tomato you have. Indeterminate, determinate, doesn't matter. If you put it in the ground just as soon as you can, usually after the first two or three weeks and that plant's already got some top growth coming, you need to go ahead and prune those lower leaves off. What's going to happen is it's going to rain, the water's going to splash up on those leaves, and that's how you're going to get your diseases. A lot of them are soil borne, and if you can keep the rain from splashing those things up onto the plant, you got a better chances of uh, keeping things going and lessening your problems. So I'm going to go ahead and prune this thing up real quick, clean it up. Now, I'm in a greenhouse where I don't really feel like uh, I'm going to have any soil borne disease issues, but it's a good idea to stay in the habit of keeping your plants clean. Plus, it's going to do a lot better if I can clean the bottom up and be able to get access to it, run my drip line, put the mulch around it, just make an overall more healthy plant. And you can use whatever. Some people come in and just break them off. I prefer to just clip them off. Makes it a lot cleaner look. I go on and take the bottom three leaves off. You ain't gonna. As far as suckering goes on a determinate vine, for the most part, you're not gonna be doing any suckering, with the exception of this right here. A lot of people will use this rule. They will take this first blossom cluster right here 
and anything below that regardless of what type of plant you have go ahead and get them off of there so we'll get these little suckers off get them out of the way now that plant's nice and clean I've got one big sucker to come right out the side just below this cluster we're gonna leave him right there everything else below that nice and clean I don't have anything sitting on the ground now I can come back and clean this up I can mulch it I could side dress it if I wanted to lay my drip line and I'm good to go the only thing this thing needs now is a little bit more time and get a cage around it once this thing gets up into this range right here and really starts to fill out on the inside you got your tomatoes coming on and it starts to look like a jungle in there uh, if you get to the point where you really can't even see the tomatoes inside because you got so much growth it's usually not a bad idea to come inside and just cut a few limbs out of here try to uh, allow this thing to ventilate somewhat you want to be able to get air moving up through it uh, if you're in a situation where it's hot humid damp all the time and the plant gets moisture down in there and can't get air to it uh, that's another breeding ground for diseases right there and it would be real easy just come by with your snips go in and pick a few branches that uh, just look like a bunch of foliage not a lot of fruit on them go ahead and cut them out and open that thing up a little bit you're not going to hurt the plant whatsoever well i had the clippers in my hand went ahead and trimmed up these lower leaves the ones that were laying on the ground got my suckers off of there got these things looking good now they're ready for me to put the mulch around it i got some about four year old aged wood chips i'm going to mulch them real good with that lay my drip line down put my cages around them and we'll be ready to rock and roll so i hope that was helpful Hope y'all grow some great big maters this year, and I'll see you next time.